Hey there, Dungeoneers, Luke here, and welcome to another fantastic Black Desert Online video. Now guys, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, as you can see, there's a brand new waifu on the channel. Feel free to fall in love as much as you want. And today, we're going to be talking about all the progress we've been making in the last couple days. Might even have been a week or two, um, for, especially for those of you who haven't been tuning into the live stream, where you may have caught some of the stuff happening live. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, guys, is check out the gear and let you know what our plan of action is. So right now, we're still sitting on the same armor we had last time. We got the plus 15 Grunel, the Roaring, and the Kaya. I'm still waiting for some plus 15 Grunel gloves to show up on the marketplace. Um, they're a bit of a pain to get a hold of. I haven't really got a chance to get to those yet. Uh, but more importantly, let's talk about the weapons. Um, I've been grinding quite a lot, mainly just at Polys and Gahaz, while also getting slightly RNG carried by um, events that have been going on, getting lots and lots of money for those. Um, so we've managed to upgrade it to an Ultimate Elsh Crescent Pendulum now. Um, this isn't going to be on the character for that much longer, uh, so take a good look and wave goodbye. <laughs> but I do really like the Elsh. I think the Elsh is probably one of the best pre-boss weapons in the game that you can get. Um, they're a little hard to get your hands on, but if you can get your hands on one of them, they are very, very good. Uh, and I only got it up to try because I don't really think you need anything farther than that until you have your actual boss gear, your Zarkas, and your offhands and stuff like that. Um, so I just kind of left her at try. And she's just kind of sitting there. But like you can see there, it gives you quite a bit of AP for 90 to 98. Uh, you have 184 accuracy, which is extremely underrated. Um, very, very good accuracy. And it has plus 16 all species damage and 6 AP versus monsters. Uh, as well as 1 attack speed and 1 crit. Uh, which actually applied onto it due to the fact that I made it yellow with a weapon reform stone. And special effect HP recovery plus 5 by 5% 5 chance per hit. Uh, which I don't really notice because, as you can see, our main grinding character has finally been released and she is a lawn. And lawn basically has the best sustain, <laughs> like pretty much in the game while grinding it. She's absolutely insane. Um, for my main hand, or I guess my technically my awakening weapon, which is pretty much your main hand when you're playing lawn, uh, we just went for try greens and made them yellows. Um, again, it, it's not really worth using the blue one until later on, and even at that point, you might as well be working towards a dandy. Um, so I just went for the tri greens. They give you plus nine all species damage, a decent amount of AP. Um, overall, I'm pretty solid, pretty cheap. Uh, so I just went for the tri ones there. And then this is the main RNG carry that we got. Um, I managed to get myself a Kudum, and it was a Kudum box, actually. I managed to get out of one of the chests that I you get for when you were level... Sorry, not when you were level 50. When you were at, well, online at Christmas time, uh, they gave you a free boss gear set. But I hadn't opened it in this whole time because I needed a level 58 character. Um, as you can see, we got her up to level 58 here. We opened it up and we got a Kudum box. And essentially, the only thing we've been doing for the last two weeks is slamming black stones into it and then going out and grinding and getting money for memory shards so that we can repair it and come out and slam more black stones into it. And that's really all we've been doing for like the past two weeks, guys. Um, literally, all we've been doing is working on this Kudum. And you can see we finally got it all the way up to Duo. Uh, I highly recommend you don't do what I did. Uh, going from literally unenhanced all the way up to Duo was an absolute nightmare. And I'm sure I've probably spent more money on this item than I have spent on all my gear combined easily. Uh, just in memory fragments and everything alone. It doesn't show the prices here, but I think they're about, about 100 mil a piece. Um, I've spent so much money on memory fragments and so much time doing scroll runs and relic runs and all sorts of stuff trying to get memory fragments. Um, but it does have a plan that is going to pay off. Um, as you guys can see there, a Duo Kudum Noble Sword is actually worth 840 million silver. Um, I'm sure I've probably spent about 200 to 300 mil uh, just trying to enhance this bad boy. And realistically, guys, all I've been doing for that money is just grinding at Polys or Gahaz. Um, but I'm kind of sick of it, and I'm moving out to Dubinkroon because I love grinding Blood Wolves. Um, but on to the main plan, guys. As you can see, a Duo Kudum is worth 840 mil. Uh, but if we were to go to the Central Market and check out a Nuver, which is the other main boss offhand, uh, you can see that a Duo Nuver is only 437 mil. Uh, and it actually gives us 9 AP more and a little bit less DP. And it doesn't give us that extra AP versus monsters plus 33. Um, but what it does give us, however, is an increased AP bracket. Um, now, if you guys don't know what the AP brackets are, uh, I definitely recommend you look them up online. But essentially, as it works, is you get more AP the higher AP you have um, as sort of like a bonus just for getting your gear up there. So the amount of money that we made, as you can see, we could go easily with our 800k. We can get a tri 
uh, Noble Sword, which is going to give us 15 AP more on both our main hand and our off hand, um, or our Awakening Weapon, which is a huge increase in damage. Um, so we're going to get one of those. And then we can also afford Azarka, which I can't quite spell while looking at the keyboard. There we go. Um, you can see we could also even afford almost up to a Tri Zarka um, off of that, which will give us another 14 AP. So that's pretty much the plan, guys. Um, I need to make a little bit more money there um, so that we can sell this Nuver off, which, you know, like I said, it was, I've just been slamming Blackstones in, guys. I haven't even really been fail stacking. Um, I probably could have done it way more efficiently, but I've literally just been slamming it, and it worked out pretty fine for us. Like I said, we probably spent around 200, maybe 300 mil, um, and we made 540 mil profit. Uh, this is pretty much the definition of RNG carry, though. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you guys. Like, this is not a way to make money in this game. Enhancing to make money is probably the worst thing you can possibly do. I just kind of happen to get lucky. Um, but keep yourselves tuned, because not only are we going to be working on this main series, I am going to be doing a series of grind spot review videos um, starting probably within the next week or so where i'm going to be taking you guys all the way from low level to high level grind spots and showing you what you can kind of expect and you know throwing in the the usual kind of no bs just kind of hanging out um, i'm not very good with math and stuff like that so it's going to be a little bit more uh realistic and you know just kind of like what you can realistically expect from going there um but yeah, so we're going to be selling this very soon. And once we manage to get its durability back up to 100, uh, as you can see there, we're currently at 71 durability. And we're looking at making up to, I think it's around 36 to 40 mil uh, in order to afford all the uh, memory fragments that we need. In here, we only have 1.8 mil right now. Uh, we're not really doing well. So we need to make about another, like I said, about another 30 to 40 mil. Um, but what we're doing for that, guys, is we are grinding at Blood Wolves. Now, Blood Wolves are not exactly the best... Um, for this AP level, as you can see down at the bottom there, I'm at 163 to 166. Uh, Blood Wolves are requiring around 190 to grind efficiently. I mean, you could probably do it with about 180 um, or less, but I mean, I'm about 20 AP below what I need to be at to be grinding these guys, and I'm grinding them quite inefficiently. Um, and I know what you're saying is, why would you not be headed to Polly's or Gahaz? And the simple matter is, um, I don't enjoy grinding there as much as I enjoy grinding at Blood Wolves. I think the Blood Wolves rotations are very, very nice to grind. Uh, you have tons and tons of enemies. They're all packed up really nicely. Uh, there's elites. There's the random Garmoth spawns, which is a random event that can come down and you sometimes get a chest from it, uh, which can have some good armor. And even though I haven't actually got any yet, there are potential for some extremely good drops um, from the Blood Moon or the Blood Moon? Yeah, the Blood... No, the Blood Wolves. Um, have a chance of dropping some very good items here. Um, as you can see, they drop Akum Armor, which is around 5 to 10 mil apiece. Uh, they have a chance of dropping Manos Craftsman Clothes, although I know loads of people who grind here and they've never gotten one. I don't know anybody who's ever gotten one of these dropped, but they are there. Um, you can get an Eye of the Ruins Ring. That'd be a nice 40 mil in the bank. Uh, they can drop Kegnum Submission Rings, which are 1.6 mil, but I have one sitting right now that I sold and they never sell. <laughs> I've never had them sell. Um, they drop Garma Scales, which also don't really sell right now, but they may down the line. Uh, they can drop Hoom or Gervish Crystals. Uh, I've managed to get a Gervish. I have not managed to get a Hoom yet. And then, of course, the Ancient Spirit Dust, Kafras, and the Black Stones are where most of your money comes from. Um, as well as the Trash Loot, which actually comes in pretty quickly. Uh, as you can see at the top there, it says recommended AP above 190. Um, so we're gonna, what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to head over. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you guys the the sort of rotation that I've been working on. Um, it's not the main rotation, but I feel like, unfortunately, in order to be efficient, I'm doing a much smaller rotation uh, just because my AP is a little bit too low. And like I said, guys, if you want to be as efficient as possible and you're around this AP, I would highly recommend you head to Gahaz or Polly's. Um, I just have a bit of an issue because I find that Polly's is always very contested when I'm there uh, by people with way more gear than me. So I pretty much just end up getting destroyed every time I go there. And then Gahaz is a little bit less um, contested, I find. But every... Oh, I am actually about to commit suicide. Actually, I almost made that jump. Um, I find Gahaz is less contested, but I really don't like the main grind spot there. The uh, The main rotation at Gahaz is kind of... I don't know. It's really weird to grind, especially in the main pack area. Um, the main pack is very sort of spread out, which I don't like at all. Uh, should, can I survive this jump? I feel like if I wait five seconds, I can survive this jump. I don't really know what's going on over here, though. There's some very sort of neat tents and some mowed grass here. This is very interesting. I've never been over here before. It's kind of weird. 
like they sort of started developing it and then never did. It's just plain grass. But anyway, we're going to fly ourselves over in this direction here. And luckily, the lawn takes very little fall damage. Uh, but when you do take fall damage, uh, fun fact, it hits you very hard. I basically jumped off of the top of Gahaz at one point, and I was in the air for probably five, maybe ten seconds straight, and just died. <laughs> just straight up. I was just flying, and my character just went blip, and I just died. So that was fun. But uh, anyways, um, so these are the blood wolves here, guys. Uh, the actual blood wolves are not the guys you want to kill. Um, even though I am killing them right now, the blood wolves are not the main guys you want to kill. Uh, you want to be heading up and checking out on YouTube the elite rotation uh, for the blood wolves. I, if you guys want, I can make a video on that. Leave a comment down below if that's something you're interested in seeing. But it's mainly these sort of guys here, the sort of bipedal dudes. Uh, they have all sorts of good drops and the blood wolves really don't drop too much, guys. They don't even drop the main trash loot from the area. Um, Sorry if it seems if I'm grinding kind of slow here with the recording program running in remaster. It doesn't exactly run the best. Uh, Blood Wolves is very, very full of enemies and your computer sort of hates it. Um, I don't know if it's all sorts of, you know, the stuff that's going on in the background or if it's just the area in general, but I find it is a little laggy here sometimes. Um, as you can see, we got one of these Necklace of Eternal Winters dropped. These are an event that's going on. You can turn these in and uh, get enhancement materials in Velia. Uh, but this is the trash loot you're looking for, guys. This is the Blood and Wolf, Blood Wolf Main. They sell for $21.20 a piece. And they actually, you know, they actually make you pretty decent cash. Um, you, I tend to get quite a bit of the Ancient Spirit Dust here as well, uh, which you can turn into Kaffir Stones. And that, of course, makes great money. Kaffir Stones always sell well, um, always sell quickly, and are really, really worth it. You can get actual Kaffirs dropped here. Um which are also is a great treat as well. But as you guys can actually see, I usually grind it a little bit faster than this. I don't actually have my food running right now. I should probably pop one of those. Um, but with remaster, my frame rate's low enough that it's actually making some of my moves hit a little bit slower. But you can sort of get an example of what my damage usually is on these guys. Um, with my forwards F ability, which gives me monster AP, uh, and you try and use your backwards right mouse button as your main sort of clearing ability now. There are a couple really cool abilities that Lawn has, which I can go over if you guys are interested in a sort of Lawn PVM guide. Uh, she has some very cool abilities to use. Um, they look gorgeous in Remaster, of course, but they don't exactly run the best. <laughs> I'm actually running this at around, I think I'm recording at around 60 right now, but I'm usually playing about 140, so um, that's very uh, <laughs> that's very fun. I'm also not getting too, too many of uh, the guards to spawn. As you guys can see, there's little jails in the back there. And if you kill a bunch of them, you can sometimes get a, a guard to spawn in. Uh, he sort of randomly appears and he sends a horde of these guys after you. And then when you fight him, he has a really good drop chance of uh, good items. But for some reason, he just really hasn't been spawning. I know a couple people who get probably like five to ten guard spawns every time they come here. And I get like maybe one every like three runs. So I'm assuming it's just because I'm not grinding them effectively. Um, like I said, it's sort of inefficient for me. It is usually a lot faster than this. Uh, I'm really feeling this frame rate hit while recording. Um, but I wanted to record and remaster for you guys because the lawn's abilities are just so gorgeous. Like, they're honestly fantastic. Um, and what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I am going to be staying in Duvenkroon. Uh, as the title of this video says, I am moving to Duvenkroon. Um, I just love this town, guys. It's in a great area. It's near a really, really good world boss that you really want to do. Uh, it's got Blood Wolves nearby, which make great money. It's got uh, higher end areas as well when I end up getting more AP. Um, but the plan for right now, like I said to you guys, uh, up until the next video, is we are going to grind until we make about 60 mil. Or 30 mil, sorry, 30 mil. And we're going to use that 30 mil to repair our Kudum, sell it, and get ourselves a Nuver. Uh, and once we get the Nuver and we're in a higher AP bracket, I'm going to show you guys some higher end grind spots. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that, guys. As well, I want to mention, um, this, as the, like I said, as this is the main series on the channel, um, I'm not going to be switching off this account. So I guess you could say that technically the series is <laughs> probably not going to end, but I am going to be continuing working on it. But if you guys have ideas for other things you'd like to see as well, um, I thought about doing some grind videos, like, you know, sort of like, you know, testing out spots, seeing what kind of drops we can get, stuff like that. Um, I have an idea for a couple PvP videos as well, but obviously I need to learn how to PvP first. 
But if there's any sort of interesting guides that you guys really can't really find on YouTube, let me know what you're looking for. Um, I do have an idea for a couple of videos about gathering as well. Um, I know that a lot of people out there don't like life skilling, but it is really, really broken right now. Like life skilling is actually insanely broken if you're a low gear score. Um, I would argue that if you're below maybe 180 or 160 gear score, it is definitely better for you to be gathering than it is for you to be grinding. Um, I know I say that as I'm grinding right now, but the Kudum is giving me a significant advantage. Um, if I was using like blue gear right now, I would not be able to grind these guys at all. Um, as you can see there, that's the Ancient Spirit Dust. Like I said, you combine five of those and a Blackstone armor and you get a Kaffir Stone, just like that. Uh, three mil in the bank every time you get five of those. So, um, And you do get the Blackstones here as well. So you usually have enough to turn them in. Um, and that's just quick and easy money. But like I said, stay tuned for some more videos, guys. I'm sorry this one took a while to get out. Um, I've been really trying to get the live stream all set up. I did get Twitch affiliate. So if you guys haven't checked out the live stream yet, twitch.tv slash Dungeoneers live. I am now a Twitch affiliate, which means I'm actually monetized on Twitch, which is fantastic. Um, so I've been working on trying to get the live stream set up as much as possible. Ooh, a night spawn. I don't see him around, though. Uh, when I come across him, I'll activate him. Uh, but yeah, I've been trying to get that all set up. So sorry for the lack of videos. Um, but I think the live stream is pretty much all set up now. So like I said, if you guys ever want to tune in, twitch.tv slash Dungeoneers Live. We're going to be streaming a lot more now that we're monetized. And it's uh, we're going to be putting out a lot more videos as well. Um, now that I finally got everything all set up, I got a great recording software. I got everything set. Um, so expect a new video soon. Pretty much expect a new video as soon as I get this Kudum sold and get the Nuber. Because we're going to be headed out to a higher AP area. Um, and I'm going to show you guys the progress. Uh, great progress videos coming in. But like I said, if you guys have any videos out there that you want to see, for example, like any sort of guide on anything in the game, even if it's something that you know, you think that I don't necessarily know about, I have tons of friends in this game who can offer great information and I have no issue sharing that with you. So um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Sorry if this video was kind of weird. Um, it was basically the first video I've made in a long time. And even though I don't have any really good footage of stuff happening, um, <laughs> I do ha did have a lot of changes since the last time you guys saw me. Um, but like I said, thank you all so, so much for tuning in. Once again, guys, if you haven't followed the live stream yet, don't forget to head over there. It's a great time. We listen to tons of good music, hang out, grind, talk about everything to do with the game. And it's always just a good atmosphere. Um, our live stream, I try and keep it as drama free as possible. I don't really, you know, talk smack about anybody. It's just sort of a chill laid back live stream where you can grab yourself a coffee, uh, listen to some smooth jazz or whatever you want and uh, come hang out and have a great time. So uh, thank you all so much. And I will see you probably within a day or two because it really shouldn't take me too long to get this Kudum fixed. Uh, and I'll be showing you guys off my brand new gear and I will see you then. Have a great night, guys.